Greetings, this is Darvain and I am creating a couple of tutorials on request on how to play Hero Quest using Roll20. So the first thing we should do is create a new game. Okay. So this is going to be Hero Quest Tutorial. And that's pretty much it, all you need. There's a couple of other options, but you really just need a name. And that's it, you create the game. Uh, then you can choose if you want to drop a file, get used to uploading graphics, but we don't need to worry about that. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I will be uh, basically creating a very uh, quick example copy of the maze, the first quest in the U in the UK edition of Hero Quest. <clears throat> it's worth noting that I have a plus membership on Roll Twenty, but everything we do, you can use under the free account. Okay, I'll go over some of the buttons as well the tutorials on roll 20 are quite good so anything that you want to look feel free to experiment develop your own style don't take my word as don't take my word as gospel this is just how i like to do it okay first off we have chat which is obviously where you talk but you can also run macros and commands to roll dice direct in chat so you don't have to worry about adding extra things that you don't want to add as long as you've got the basics down I cut some commands to roll a dice for example are slap forward slash roll and then 1d6 which would be which is the common dice used in Hero Quest because even the combat dice are six-sided dice. That gives you a result, and from that you can simply use one to one to three as a skull, four and five as a shield as a white shield, and six as a black shield. So you can talk, you can use voice, and you can roll the dice, and that's pretty much pretty much uh, gameplay done that you really need. For, in terms of dice. We have the art library and here is where you upload all the stuff. You'll see that I've already created a load of assets that I've been using because I already have, because I've been uh, asset, I've been uh, creating my own game to run on, you, on a Roll20. Uh, we have the journal, which is where you will add characters, uh, monsters, and notes. The jukebox you can pretty much ignore unless you want to add sounds to your game. It's pretty much an, an optional extra. Um, and then we have this last selection, which is uh, that fell under the, which is the collection tabs for your macros, decks, and it comes with a deck of playing cards already built in if you want to use those, and rollable to, um, the ability to create rollable tables, all of which are entirely optional. So we have, this is the page toolbar, and you're basically you have to have a one page to start with. Um, the players tag determines what the players see this is we're obviously creating in GM mode um, so even though we're on what we're on a page what we would do is to create you simply press the click to create a new page create a new page it's that simple these pages 
oh they're cool pages you can consider them basically boards or maps or whatever you want to do so you could get away with just creating one which uh, is basically a copy of the board or you could have different ones with different versions of the board as required and stuff like that I mean I'm just do doing the maze so I'm going to put it as the maze because I tend to have a page per quest so that I can set up multiple games and within the same campaign and then what we do move the players there and you can just simply get rid of this one if you want I just do it delete the page can't delete because I'm going to have to switch to that one see it stops you from deleting the page that you're on so ain't worth noting but all you do is you click on the page it takes you to it and then we can delete that page otherwise you can edit a page that's on so we'll go with page settings first off it's worth noting you have page size now for the hero quest board i know from experience it that the hero quest board with a single tile border is 28 wide by 21 tall okay can choose grid cells you can choose the types of grid but we'll be using square you can determine how they're measured and you can determine you know roughly how many squares to cut for example for each one whether it's a 10 square or whether it's a five foot square we'll just leave them as it is for now uh, all the other options are pretty much optional don't have to use any of them uh, I tend to use the only one I tend to use is fog of war but so that you can pre-place and then reveal the map of the board as you go but there's no reason why you why you have to do that when you could instead say uh, use the GM layer and just show the tokens as you need okay so okay we are done I'll enable fog of war later to show you how that works and just for work ease of working generally let me get rid of these are some of the options where I do uh, I tend to get rid of that to name to uh, name only that's just a personal preference for me but yes yeah, so there's our board you can just use that you could draw lines and stuff and create your board and directly on to the uh, map if you really want to like I said all of the key principle to understand here is that you can do pretty much as much or as little as you want to create your game to go with the aesthetic that you want now I have already done some stuff so and created PNGs of most of the assets I'm going to use for how I do it and one of those is that see I'll open up this is some images for some tokens that I I, I crept to use but uh, I have one for maps and I have one for cards if I go to my maps so a list of the maps I've got and you'll see that I've already got the maze now these are all done using my favorite method of of dungeon using dungeonographer because I also use it for a lot of um, roll 20 games that aren't hero quest and it's very easy to create a tile based map you can set the squares to be uh, 70 pixels wide so they match automatically match the size of the map you're using when you and you can export them as pngs 
which you then quickly upload like this and stretch out and know that they're going to fit once you've got the bases down. All you really have to do is count the squares. Or in the case of Hero Quest, knowing that the map that you've designed is 28 by 21, you don't even have to worry about that. So we'll click on the map that we've got. Here you go, I'll upload it again. I know it's, I've already uploaded it, but because I've already got a whole bunch of Hero Quest assets, not including maps. But all you really do, need to do is we will be working on various layers. I'll point these out to you in a minute. First off, we, the main thing you'll be working on is the token layer. Okay, that's the map. All that you've got to do now, drag it out. It's, uh, er, it's uh, selected to align to grid. So all you've got to do is drag it out and there's your map. Okay, so and it really is that simple. And then having done that, I can select and right click to get the layers layers option and just send it to the back so it's behind everything else and then to the map layer. There you go, that's the map. So these options down the side are how you basically create and run your game. Uh, you have select and pan, they're self-explanatory. Uh, layers, you can. there are three layers not including dynamic lighting. Uh, you've basically got the map and background layer, which is the best place to put all your stuff that doesn't move. That way you can use the objects and tokens layer for the stuff that you are going to move around without interfering with the map and they'll automatically be placed on and over the map. And then you've got the GM info overlay, which is the top layer, which you can use to hide stuff. And you can go into that and just click. It's useful for things like secret doors and traps. You can just click and then send them to the token layer or to the map, or to the map layer or wherever you want to send them, send them to. The token layer is probably the best if, if there's a possibility that they're going to get moved or removed. You know, and uh, so that it can be, so that you can play it like that. You've seen the uh, draw, the draw options. There's bits there for text, draw shapes, and whatever. Zoom is basically a list of presets for over here. We have these are your rulers, it's a raw ruler, so you can measure between lines. Show you how that works. So for example, if you want to know exactly how many uh, squares and how long the distance is, you can measure between two points. Let's set these options. We have, this here is the fog of war layer. Here. Um, we have, which basically, we haven't set fog of war, but if you decide you want to use fog of war, then, uh, it is a quick way to enact it onto a map because it comes up with an option to do so if you haven't already set it. So, for example, if we look on, or it should do, I don't know if I can see, but we'll, you can put it on there as well. And you'll notice it goes darker. Being darker, for, for, is only for the GM. The players will see a black screen and all everything covered by fog. And basically you can reveal areas either by just simply moving and selecting an area to reveal, which lightens it up, or by using a polygon reveal to for more complicated shapes. Say I wanted to reveal that entire corridor for some reason you know when you're ready you do it it shows up now you'll notice that I have because I've done this map before I have included doors in all the all the visible doors directly onto the board as part of the PNG that's just something that I like to do because that's a method that I use 
in other games that I found works really well. Um, we have turn orders, which will be, which we'll go over later, but we will allow you to add a turns to your icon so you don't lose track of what's going on. Then we have a dice, so you can custom build like, what dice you use uh, dice you're using to do more complex rolls. But most of the commands you can learn to put in the that you can learn to put into the uh, chat box and then you've got your help for everything else that I don't cover so now we're gonna go to reset fog which basically resets that and that's pretty much the basics that you need for the, for the game at this point going over like I said the tutorials for Vol20 are immensely helpful and you can pretty much use this to play for example if I go to my library and you're not interested in actually having character sheets and stuff like that you could for example grab tokens and just make sure you're on the objects layer select on the objects layer and you're on select mode just move them around and play your game like that so basically uh, what the token if you've got the area revealed if you're using a uh, fog of war your players will see and you we see what the players everything on the token layer as it pretty much as it happens there's very minimal delay bit of lag depending on your internet that's about it um, so I will do because I've got this up here but the sim as done is I've got some bits for tiles in this case we have stairs tile which make sure I get it right and put there and drag out to cover that space which is where the stair tile goes in the maze um, I use these images for small blocks which being one tile big you can just drag out so as required I mean most of the work comes from imaging the assets uh, from sorting out the assets and uh, for what you need you might not want to use the hero quest aesthetic tiles or you might not want to or you might want to acquire a scan of the board or you may want to put in tile doors you can do all that so I don't want that one we want layer map these can go over to the maps as well because they're not going to be moved so layer map layer map layer map um, finish it off with I've got a few more blocks to do because uh, uh here see just layer map and layer map i mean i like this approach because it also reminds me a lot of the uh computer game by gremlin and that sort of that sort of aesthetic and it goes well with the pixel art type um that i've got for me tokens so Okay, uh, large blocks, we need two, there should be, oh, three, uh, yeah, two, one down here. All of these here are done, but what you can do, is, for example, with the large box, you can copy and then move that up a bit, paste and move 
and when you move it it should be aligned you can align it to snap to the grid as an option and then once again layer map layer map okay so that's the that's the blocks done that's our maze that's the basic part of the maze done finally we want to put in the secret doors okay there, there's four secret doors these are all a single square put them in there little handle at the top standard kind of image to rotate how you need and then these go to the GM layer which means because you've moved it to the GM layer you no longer be able to click on it or change it till you go to the GM layer like so at which point you can slick on let's collect on it and then move that to, to sorry right click to move that to the token layer with the map layer so so do, do it to the token layer so that we can move it back it's also useful for tokens like monsters to do ambushes and stuff like that so we will put in the rest of the doors and i think that will be it for this first tutorial which is going to be having creating the having created the board so gm layer turn it around i could have gone the other way i'm just gm layer secret door okay and the gm layer so there you have it that is your book that is the board done it's creating a board is pretty much as easy as that for creating your maps your next step is to put your tokens on and then do whatever you want to do as needed so this has been darvain doing this first tutorial on how to create a hero quest game in roll 20 and join me in the second one for further information as we look into tokens and probably characters so until the next time goodbye